So that's what I want to talk about next is how Earth creates its magnetic field. Um, so magnets in general, um, if you have a bar magnet on your fridge, uh, you might know that they have north and south poles. It's really hard to put like poles together, but opposite poles will stick together readily. Um, if you take like a bunch of iron filings and then you throw a bar magnet down on top of them, the iron will line up along the magnetic field lines. So magnetic field lines are basically lines that we draw to connect the north pole to the south pole. They always point toward the south pole of the magnet. So if I was going to draw magnetic field lines on this pattern of iron filings, it would look a little something like this. Um, all of the lines come out of the North Pole and they connect around to the South Pole. So um, if I put a compass around the bar magnet in these different locations, the North Pole of the magnet points along the magnetic field lines. So it's always pointing toward the South Magnetic Pole. And the Earth is basically the same. Um, it's not a permanent bar magnet, of course. It creates its magnetic field in a different way than a bar magnet does. Um, but it still has the shape of a bar magnet. The magnetic field has that same shape. So looking at the picture of our field on Earth compared to the bar magnet, um, do you suppose that the North Geographic Pole is where the north or south magnetic pole is. Okay, so this is new information and I didn't really put it anywhere on this slide again, but the south pole, south magnetic pole is where all the arrows of the magnetic field lines point. Therefore, if this picture is drawn correctly, it means that actually the north geographic pole corresponds to the south magnetic pole. And this is indeed the case. Um, that's why we set up compass magnets so that the north compass side points toward the south magnetic pole. South magnetic pole attracts the north end of a compass magnet because opposites attract. All right, so if I was going to draw that bar magnet as if it was like inside the earth, then south would be toward north geographic pole. OK, so um, if I were to consider you know, how does this magnetic pole line up with the geographic pole? It's actually not exactly on center. So slightly off center, um, only a little bit, not as much as for other planets, as we'll see when we talk about other planets. And um, how does the Earth set up this magnetic field? Uh, well, in short, it's created by electric charges moving through the liquid outer core. So um, I'm not gonna show it to you now, but there's a YouTube video where you can learn how a coil of wire can create a magnetic field as electric charges flow through the wire. And when you um, make an electromagnet like this, it creates the exact same magnetic field pattern as a bar magnet. So the electromagnets field pattern and the bar magnets field pattern look exactly the same. So this is the only reason that the Earth's magnetic field looks like a bar magnet's field. It's not that the Earth is a big bar magnet. It's more like an electromagnet. And specifically, the types of um, electric charges that move, they move through the outer liquid core in this sort of spiral shape, the same spiral shape as our um, coil of wire. And that is what generates the shape of a bar magnet, even though it's not a big bar magnet. So the way that this is created is essentially heat from convection in the outer core um, combined with the Earth's rotation sets up a relatively stable pattern of flow in the outer core. And because it's a metal, then it contains charged particles and sets up a magnetic field. The same process happens in some moons of the outer solar system, except for instead of a metal, it's a salty water fluid instead. So lots of different ways to create a magnetic field. Sometimes you'll get stronger magnetic fields than others, depending on the um, speed of the rotation and also how, uh, how much free charge there is in the fluid involved. This situation is not very stable. Um, it's stable over reasonably long geological times, but not forever. And eventually the magnetic field will flip over because the fluid flow um, won't hold that pattern of flow forever. And so we can see this evidence in the ocean floor 
um, if you look at rocks from the ocean floor, they were created kind of more or less continuously from seafloor spreading, which we'll talk about next time. And so alternating bands of floor that were created under different magnetic conditions, um, they lock in that magnetic polarity. So we can see how often this has happened in the past. And right now the location of our field um, is drifting. So this is the location of the South Magnetic Pole near the North Geographic Pole over time. So we don't know exactly when this field will flip, but it'll flip eventually. Okay, um, the whole magnetic field has the overall shape of a bar magnet, but um, it's stretched out away from the sun because there are charged particles called the solar wind that come off of the sun and they basically um, shape that tail of the magnetic field um, so that it's more elongated away from the sun. And also these charged particles, as they encounter the magnetic field, they get trapped on top of the field lines. Um, but as these solar wind particles come toward our magnetic field lines, um, they travel along the magnetic field lines. Uh, this is just what charged particles do. It's just like the iron filings lining up with the field lines of the bar magnet. Um, and since they're free to move, they don't just stay in place. They flow along those magnetic field lines until they all wind up near where the largest concentration of lines is at the North Pole and the South Pole. And once those charged particles smash into the Earth's atmosphere, they cause the air to glow, just like, um, like a neon light. Basically, the same physics behind a neon light causes the aurora borealis and the aurora australis. So if you've ever wondered why aurora happen mostly near the poles, that's where most of the magnetic field lines wind up. And so the charged particles are more likely to smash into the atmosphere there than they are near the edges of the Earth, near the equator. All right, um, I think that's almost all I had to talk about, except you all want to look at beautiful pictures of Aurora, correct? I would love to see that in person someday. <laughs>